Okay, well, thank you, thank you, Wendy. And and uh, you see, this is PD forty five zero one eight fifty six. I'm going to explain that, and that's that's actually the serial number of of my bus. And and today you're going to be entertained, and you're going to see a lot of pictures, and and you may actually just learn something about project management too. I'm also going to talk about rescuing and what that means by rescuing this bus. That's me in the upper right, and my good friend Dale in the in the lower right, and uh, we uh, did a little bit of this uh, this rescuing together. But I'll I'll share with you about the team and and what this project was was all about but first let me just share with you inspiration and i grew up in the 1960s and this is this is one of my lesney matchboxes and and i just love this bus and this iconic bus and and i said i gotta have one of these well it's you know 50 years later and and and, and i have one of these now and i'm going to share with you the project and it was quite involved in, in getting this but this was the inspiration and i remember seeing one of these in, in real life as a kid and i was like that is just so cool and and, and so for 50 years I, I just wanted one of these things. So uh, in, in setting out in 2019, late 2019 with the ideation and saying, put in the vision and the budgeting and saying, I got to find one of these buses because these these things were made in 19, you know, 50s. So uh, there's there's not too many of them around. So uh, that was a, just kicking it off in the ideation, then the planning, the execution, controlling and closure. And you could see here, uh, this was envisioned to be a, a, a six-month, seven-month project here. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you that we're not exactly on the, the seven-month project, and some we'll go through lessons learned as we as we go through this. But let me just share the the, the journey that I and a number of friends uh, are, have been on. And, and, and first, I call this bus stalking. And uh, when I had the, the vision of I, I want to run a project to find one of these buses and ultimately convert it into a motorhome, a 40 foot long, 40,000 pound, 11 and a half foot high motorhome, uh, you know, from a 1956 bus. But how to find one of these first. So I call it bus stalking because you don't just look in the local paper and find one. There's there's not too many of these things around in the world. So looking at Google, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, Yahoo groups, all these specialty forums and YouTube. I just searched for the last few years, anybody who mentioned anything about these or had one and had one for sale and and uh, just started looking for the people. And be careful what you put out there. Pictures with metadata, you could find out where the picture was taken and be a uh, uh, if you post what city you're in or a name, I uh, was able to uh, find things. And this is satellite photos and we did a lot of satellite searching and finding buses. And they have a very distinct shape from a, from a satellite and basically found, uh, you know, found a person, found a name, found a, uh, you know, where the bus is, found a satellite photo and it's associated with a building nearby, found out who owns a building, called it. So this, this is stalking, <laughs> but uh, called many people. There was a, um, a number of hangups. There was a number of uh, how'd you find me, and there were a number of people says, yeah, I, I'd sell you my bus. So uh, found a number of buses and had a number of conversations, and ultimately picked one and set off in ins on an inspection trip. So the first thing, the you know, first part of the project was uh, just uh, my Dale, my friend Dale and I, we went out to California. That's where we found one of these buses. Put together a whole checklist. I didn't. I never even even uh, was in one of these buses before never uh, uh, worked on anything big like this never had a motor home but uh, so I had a put together a checklist and so I drew upon some experts and put together a multi-page hundred point checklist to uh, go do an inspection on this thing so you know some of the and you're going to see as we go through this this webinar whenever you see this bus you're going to see on the side of it says lessons learned this actually is a a picture of my my bus that I did buy and the project that uh, we ran here. So, but uh, every time you see this, it's going to be about lessons learned. And from a, from an estimating standpoint, you have to have good estimates. Uh, there has to be a regimented methodology. And you could see that that checklist just in that part of it. There was something regimented there. So I just didn't go into this blindly. Uh, there was a, a lot of work and a lot of thought and a lot of research into this. And you have to have firsthand experience. I, I, I couldn't purchase this bot via email or via a phone call. This this had to be uh, for firsthand and we had to assemble a project team and they had to get their hands dirty into this. Now, 
I, I want to talk about this gentleman right here, Raymond Lowy, and and perhaps you're familiar with him, or if you're a, if you're a, a fan of industrial design, or you you researched you know the mid-century America, but but he really is the godfather of industrial design, and and I'll tell you a little bit why he's he's here because uh, he actually designed this bus, this Greyhound Scenic Cruiser, and he streamlined mid-century America. But I didn't realize any and growing up is like I like Studebaker, Studebaker Avanti and other Studebakers. And uh, I had, you know, this pencil sharpener, this iconic look pencil sharpener. And I just gravitated to these things and Skylab fascinated me. And the, but he did all these things. He designed Studebaker. He designed the bus. He designed these pencil sharpeners, Skylab, uh, the P Pennsylvania Ra Railroad uh, locomotives. They're just all these things look like they're in motion. It just look really cool. The Coke bottle, the classic Coke bottle packaging. Uh, even the livery for uh, Air Force One, Jackie Kennedy contacted him in the early 60s and, and it moved from a very military orange paint to what we see and we even see this right now. This, this livery uh, continues to today. Uh, and uh, just another cool, cool thing, the Sears cold spot refrigerator. So these are things that I saw growing up and I just, just gravitated to, and it wasn't until much later that I realized that all, this is all designed by the same man. And so this is more inspiration why I wanted this project and why I wanted one of these, uh, these, these, these buses. But here's that the history of of this 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 bus this vehicle. This was during the golden age of motor coach travel. This was a mid century icon. This Lowy's this Raymond Lowy designed dome bus. This really changed America. This was the first over the road bus you could carry luggage in. Before this point, you didn't have this kind of vehicle or this kind of transportation. It was a joint effort between Greyhound and General Motors, designated PD forty five hundred one or Parlor Diesel, 45 Passengers, Series 1. But the sales history, actually, of my bus, it was built for Greyhound in 1956. It was number 856, uh, so 856 of 1,001 produced. It was sold in the mid-1970s to, uh, to Ernie, a mechanic, a minister, a leader of New Creations Gospel Singing Group. That was their church bus. They ran all around California. But then it sat from 1996 to 2019 until I stumbled uh, uh, across it then later, but that was then purchased by um, Randy's Trucking, and they were going to use it as a camper at a, a private lake, but it sat for a year and a half, and, and I purchased it in February 2020. There's a little history on the bus. So some lessons learned from a from a charter perspective. It's important to have a to a vision to convey that uh, that charter to the project team and and align the the team with the vision. So as I started building the team, and, and I'll, I'll share with you, there's, there's quite a lot of people involved, uh, friends, vendors, uh, family. Um, th this was no small undertaking to uh, to, you know to get this uh, this bus. And by the way, I said it's in California. I'm in Pennsylvania. It's it's three thousand miles away. It's not very easy to uh, you know to move something this this big three thousand miles. And a uh, little history on it. It was it was parked here for twenty four years. It sat in Northern California. Good news, if it would have sat in Pennsylvania for 24 years, there'd be kind of nothing left of it. But uh, sitting for 24 Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year. But if you use the coupon code LEARN to EARN, you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.